people are used to airports, bus depots, uh, train station. And here this is, I mean, it's cathedral-like. And to think that such a place exists, and such a place exists just for you, to see it in these people's faces, this revelation, first time ever, I mean, epiphany, as to how great um, uh, a public transportation can be. day walking through the building and then I come out and I'm in the concrete jungle with the best views in the world. <laughs> Truth be told, I'm being honest here. <laughs> it's, it's magical. There's something about it. I call it uh, my home away from home. In 1967, this Grand Central Terminal was going to be torn down, destroyed, and obliterated. It wasn't until Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis joined that fight. That fight now had enough traction to make it so up, its way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, which helped establish a Landmarks Conservancy Act. This building being the first building that was saved under that act. They learned from tearing down Penn Station that they lost an iconic train station there and they didn't want the same thing to happen here. Suddenly, after they saw what happened at Pennsylvania Station, Suddenly, the American public grew a brain in their head, and they realized that, you know what, maybe glitzier, glitzier, shinier, newer isn't better. Maybe there is some value to old historic buildings that can testify to the history, the might of this country. finest railroad terminals there is in anywhere in the world, thanks to Cornelius Vanderbilt. He was the president of New York Central. He's the guy that built this. We're the most successful shopping center in the U.S. of A. And we're not a shopping center, we're a train terminal. How does that work? I'm going to tell you. Number one, 750,000 people. Check. 200,000 visitors a day. Check. It's weather protected. Check. Everybody knows where it is. You found it. Good. <laughs> 